Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Hope you're having a good morning this morning. Beautiful Friday morning. <clears throat> it's supposed to be a pretty day today. Hope you guys get outside and enjoy it. I know we're going to. That's why I'm doing it this morning. So that we can enjoy our beautiful Friday. Alright, so we're going to talk today about some jobs that people have that goes with the environment. Okay, so talk just a little bit about Keep Cock County Beautiful and who we are and, and why our job is important, okay? So, Keep Cock County Beautiful is part of a bigger organization called Keep America Beautiful. And so, our vision and our mission is to preserve and, con well, conserve the natural resources um, and preserve the, the natural beauty of the area that we live in. So conserving our natural resources would be things that, you know, where we talk about reduce, reuse, recycle, that saves all those natural resources that we need. And to preserve the natural beauty that we have here, it means, you know, not littering and, and all the other beautification efforts that we make. Planting flowers, planting trees. Um, we have somebody in our county who's been making, who's been doing painting murals, and those are beautification efforts. Um, if you all have been to the courthouse and saw the courthouse benches and how colorful and pretty they are, that was a beautification effort. So, all of those jobs are, are important, right? We need to take care of the area where we live in. We need to take care of the natural resources. But there's other jobs besides Keep Cock County Beautiful who do things to preserve the environment where we live in. So, <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about some guys who work in something called forestry um, and of course my husband is a forester so this is something near and dear to my heart but anyways and um, forestry is not just people who get out and plant trees and fight forest fires but you know of course those are very important trees are a beautification effort we've done a video on how important trees are to us they they clean the air for us they help with soil erosion they um, provide food for animals they're home for animals they provide the food for us we cut them down and we use them for paper and and houses and furniture and all that stuff so we know trees are super important and so that sounds like that that's some important um, parts of their job planting trees and of course fighting the forest fires and stuff the wildland fires um, th Those are very important as well, especially when people's homes and communities are in danger So those are all very important responsibilities, but they do a lot of other things too. Okay, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute so in nature the ecosystem in a forest is controlled by sunlight and rain and how fertile the soil is um, and so there are things that can upset that ecosystem. There are windstorms that will blow trees down. There's insect infestation like the woolly adelgid that has attacked the hemlock trees and almost completely wiped them out. We have emerald ash borers now that are killing our ash trees. Um, so there's also trees just get diseases and they get sick just like we do. Um, and so lightning sometimes will strike a forest and all of those things can upset a forest ecosystem. And when we say upset, it's almost like that forest, I guess, maybe kind of gets sick. And so that, you know, just like when we get sick, we have to go to the doctor um, or we have to take medicine or if you do essential oils or whatever, you know, whatever works for your family, um, you do that to make you better. So we have to look at what has happened to our forest and what can we do to help make it better. It's almost like being a doctor to the forest, okay? So, now we can't depend on nature alone to take care of the forest sometimes. Um, <clears throat> so, we, um, you know, forests are so important to us. They provide the timber. They um, are a home and a habitat for the wildlife and keeps them safe. They give us clean air. They give us clean water and other forest products that we need for today and that we will need for in the future, for when future generations come along. So, in the profession of forestry... People care for forests kind of like nature does. They're kind of pretending that they're nature and kind of trying to take care of things because forests can make themselves better, but it takes many years. So sometimes when humans intervene and help take care, it speeds up the process. Like if you get sick, you can do things at home 
that will help you get better. It may take a while. If you go to the doctor, the doctor might be able to give you some kind of medicine that will speed up the healing process. So think about it kind of in those terms, okay? So in the profession of forestry, um, you know, they, they try to take care of nature in the way that nature would. All right, so there is even actually, I mean, I know we, where we live at, we have lots of forests, lots of woods. And so, you know, my husband's always super busy going out and, and looking at people's property and, and all this stuff. But there are even urban foresters. Okay, so urban means city. So there are foresters within city settings. And you're probably thinking, how in the world? Because sometimes cities are just big concrete jungles, aren't they? There's pavement and roads everywhere. But they are looking at trying to have trees and stuff within a city so that the trees can, you know, help clean the air and help clean the water because all of that stuff is super important. All right. So urban foresters, take care of like nearly 70 millions of acres of forests that grow in metropolitan areas. That's in city areas, big cities like Nashville and Memphis and places like that. So those places do have foresters who are trying to take care of the forest in those areas. Um, so, you know, thank you so much for that comment. We appreciate that. Um, so we need to, they pay close attention to factors that affect those forests, like limited growing space. Um, sometimes cities, you know, they overdevelop and they're trying to, these foresters are trying to make sure that there's space enough for trees to grow. Um, they're trying to combat the poor air that is in cities. I mean, I know the closest large city that we have to us is Knoxville. If you go to Knoxville sometimes in the summertime, they have the big signs over the interstate that say, you know, air quality alert. And I know Knoxville is probably not as developed as, as Nashville and Memphis and stuff, but it's important to combat that poor air quality and trees do that because trees clean the air they take out those pollutions and then release the oxygen for us they also you know try to um, pay attention to the lack of water and of course in cities with all the concrete and stuff sometimes there's poor poor soil quality there may be a lot more vandalism um with trees a lot of people like to carve their initials in trees and stuff like that and guys that is not good because the bark is the protective covering on a tree okay um so when you cut into the bark of a tree you are cutting into its protective layer it's almost like you're going outside in the winter time and it's super duper cold and you have on a coat and then someone just rips that coat off of you and lets you stand there in the freezing cold and the snow and letting you get wet and freeze. They took your protective covering off of you. So when we carve our initials in trees, you are taking that protective covering off that tree, allowing insects to get inside that tree and do damage to it. Okay, so as fun as it might be to carve your initials in something, I don't understand that, but if you think that's fun, um, Please don't because it hurts the tree more than helps it, okay? So, there are forestry activities that affect surrounding communities. Um, of course, trees have to be harvested. We have to harvest trees because we need paper and we need furniture and we need houses. So, they make sure that when trees are harvested, that they are harvested in a correct manner. That's not going to be detrimental to the environment or be problematic. That word means problematic if there's kids listening. Um, detrimental means problematic. So, things that's not going to cause greater problems for the environment, okay? They control, they try to help people understand about pesticides that are used. Um, because that not only affects a tree, but it also affects air quality and water quality as well. They look at... Um, how uh, forestry practices are affecting the water quality in nearby streams because we have to protect the aquatic life that's there. Foresters are trained to care for all the sim uh, systems in and around a forest. Okay, so they are definitely, Wednesday we use the word conservation. They are definitely conservationists. They are trying to conserve the resources within a forest system. Okay, so while foresters are trained in managing forest resources, 
foresters can call on other professionals who specialize in individual parts, okay? So there's a lot more to a forest than just the forest, isn't there? There's the animals that live there. There's the water that's there. There's the soil that's there. So we're going to talk about all kinds of different environmental jobs, and all of these guys are working to conserve natural resources, okay? So some specialists, you know, work in mapping and computer modeling and budgets, and um, they may um, work with other specialists who decide how to care for the forest, okay? So I'm going to give you six different job scenarios here, okay? Um, and we're going to see if they're needed or not, okay? So this lady says, many of my friends call me wild woman. That's because I'm a wildlife biologist. I help make sure that wild animals and plants have all the things they need to survive, such as food, water, and space. So is that job necessary? Absolutely, because when an animal is taken out of an ecosystem, then that upsets the whole balance of the food chain and upsets the balance of the ecosystem, okay? So yes, their job is very important. They monitor how many, um, they, well, they try to monitor. I'm sure it's kind of hard with the way animals move and stuff. They don't stay in one place, but they try to monitor how many animals is in an area. Do they have enough food that they need to eat? Are there enough predators there to keep them from growing, the population growing too much so that the ecosystem can, can't sustain them anymore? All that stuff works hand in hand, okay? So, how would you like to decide how a forest should be cared for? This is another job. That's what I do all the time. I'm a forester. Being a forester can be tricky. I have to find the right balance between all kinds of needs, including the needs of people, the needs of plants, and the needs of animals. So is that job important? Yes, it is. And like I said, my husband is a forester, and he's actually out today. He looks, he goes to people's properties, and he helps people um, learn how to manage the trees that they have there. They also try to let you know about the invasive species that you have that will... Um, choke out and kill our native species. Um, they also know a little bit about bugs and stuff that might come and, and hurt trees. They can look at trees that you think are sickly looking and try to figure out what's wrong with them. They're almost kind of like tree doctors, aren't they? Um, if people want to harvest their trees, they also help them do that and try to come up with a safe plan that's not problematic for the environment. And they do check logging jobs to make sure that people are doing them correctly and not uh, completely stripping the land of things um, and making sure that they're not causing lots of soil erosion and pollution and all that stuff. So they do have a very important job. So another, we have another scenario here. Like all hydrologists, I'm interested in water. I look at water supplies, study watersheds and water cycles and try to solve, try to solve, sorry, water pollution problems. Is that important? Sure it is, because we use water for everything, don't we? Um, we we rely heavily on water supplies, but this person's going out into the forest and making sure that the water supplies in the forest are clean and healthy um, and supporting the necessary aquatic life and plant life around the streams and stuff. So that is definitely, and they combat water pollution and and all of that, so that's definitely important. Okay, so when people ask me what I do, I tell them I have a dirty job. I'm a soil scientist. One thing I do is monitor soils to make sure they don't get smashed down or compacted. I know that soil can absorb a lot of water from snow melt and rain, but if the soil gets compacted, rainwater and snow melt can rush right off causing erosion problems. So is that guy important? Absolutely. Um, we've seen, you know, the effects of rock slides and mud slides and all that stuff. So these guys are trying to watch and make sure that things like that don't happen. Um, or try to figure out ways for it to, uh, lessen the, um, the probability of that happening. Okay. So that job is necessary. All right. Here's another one. I love numbers and I get to deal with them each day. I'm a budget analyst. So a budget is like an outline of how you're going to spend your money for the organization for that year. Um, a lot of you families probably, you know, um, kids, a lot of your mommies and daddies probably have budgets so that they know that they've got enough money to pay all their bills. So, 
This person reviews the budgets people set up to make sure they're not spending too much money or spending money on wrong things and to make sure they're spending enough money on the right things. So is that job necessary? Now that really doesn't have anything to do with the outside, does it? But it's how to manage the money. But that is important because they're making sure that that money is being spent in the right way with the correct uses. So it's kind, of, it's kind of like somebody who's checking to make sure that the money is being spent on what it's supposed to be spent on. So yeah, that's important. Um, definitely. All right. So are some living things more resistant to diseases and pests than others? Do some living things grow faster than others? Sorry about that. I think that might have cut on that. Do some living things grow faster than others? Can these abilities be transferred to other living things, creating things that are better? These are the kinds of questions I'm trying to answer. I'm a geneticist. So is that job important? Well, it says that they're trying to understand diseases and pests, and that would be like the things that have come in from different countries, like the woolly adelgid and the emerald ash borer, and there's um, there's another one that's come in too, and I can't even think of the name of it right now, that's come in that's attacking our trees. Are these guys important? Absolutely, because they're trying to figure out how to battle these things that are coming in and killing our plants and our trees. So absolutely they are important, because if all of our trees die, then we're in trouble, aren't we? We have no oxygen. If all of our plants die, we have no oxygen. We have no food. So these guys are super important. All right, so all of these six jobs, you know, and even including what we do, are all really cool jobs to have that are taking care of the environment, okay? So, you know, if you're a person, if you're a kid who likes to play in the dirt, you might want to be a soil scientist. If you're a kid who likes to play in creeks and stuff, you might want to be a hydrologist. If you love animals, you might want to be a wildlife biologist. There's all kinds of things that you can do, you know, that's with things that you like and you get to be outside and have fun, but you get paid for it. Isn't that awesome? So, um, you know, just all kinds of cool job opportunities for you guys to think about as you get older, okay? All kinds of cool stuff. And it's all things, too, that help the environment. And that's um, also very important, okay? All right. So, you have to think about, too, what kind of training would you need? Most of these jobs that we mentioned is college. You do have to go to college for them. Some of the jobs you may not necessarily have to go to college. Um, you can work for forestry and not be in college, but you have to have experience. Um, so, you know, definitely going to college is a good thing. So, please do that if you're able and can. All right. So, I think there's other things, too. Um, people can be nature guides, wildlife artists, anglers, campground managers, all kinds of things that help conserve and protect our environment, okay? All right, so now it is craft time. So, this craft was sent to me by a dear friend of mine, and I am going to do that today, okay? It really has nothing to do with trees or anything like that. Um, we've made trees and all that stuff. That's why I chose something a little bit different, but it is a bug that lives outside. So, hey, it kind of goes along, doesn't it? Okay, so you need an empty soup can or a can that corn comes in or beans or whatever. And I'm going to have to apologize because mine is still a little wet because I just painted it this morning. I thought it might dry while I was talking, but it didn't. Okay, so I have a can here and I painted it yellow all the way around and even right here, okay? Now... We're actually making a bumblebee, okay? So, I'm going to take and I'm going to paint some black stripes. Around my bumblebee. I'm just going to do a couple. Whoops. I got it. Okay. So there's the straps for my bumblebee. I cut out some wings and I'm going to glue them on the back here. So I'm going to use a hot glue gun. So kids, if you're doing this, please let a grown up help you. We don't want people to be burnt. All right, so I've got my wings. 
glued on my bumblebee. I'm going to glue some googly eyes to the front of it. Now you could get really creative and you could glue you something for a smile right there. I might just take my black brush and I might give my little bumblebee a smile. We'll let him be happy. I like happy bumblebees. Okay, now we're gonna make something that you can hang up outside. So you're gonna need some string. And we cut off a piece of string here. All right, so I'm gonna glue this. Um, you could take and get a grown up to drill a hole in the can. You could do that. I'm just gonna to try to hot glue my string in. I'm gonna hang it on my porch and I'll let you know how it holds up. <laughs> I'm gonna glue mine under my wings. You could even add some things underneath and make it like a little wind chime. And make your own little wind bumble bumblebee wind chime if you wanted to and hang it outside. It seems like it might hold up. I don't know how it hold up in a big wind. But um, we might drill some holes in it later. Anyways, there's your cute little bumblebee. Put you some little bells or something underneath. You have your little wind chime to hang outside on your porch. Is that not cute? All right. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a beautiful day today. Like I said, it's going to be so pretty out. I hope you get outside and enjoy it. I know we're going to. And I hope you have a wonderful and beautiful weekend. I hope you stay safe and stay well. And we will see you guys on Tuesday because Miss Greta will be with you on Monday. Okay? We'll talk to you later and you all have a great day. Bye-bye.